Well, it's Dr. Gordon here at South Ethan Fertility, and today is Facebook Friday, and Hi. Happy Friday. <laughs> Linda is joining me here, and um, I want to feel younger. Speechless. Kaylee is the other IVF nurse, and she's got a ponytail, so. Oh, it's your new look. So, it, looks, it looks very natural. <laughs> very natural. Yeah. Exactly. Not so much. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, you you know, you know, I saw you do something earlier, and I thought, like, what? It's like a new, it's a pet ferret. <laughs> or it's kind of like a triple. <laughs> you know, triples are born pregnant. Do you know that? What? That's a Star Trek reference. Star Trek reference. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know. It's I not real. Star Trek, Star Trek is not think. real. Say, it's not real. Okay. All right. If it was All right. Beverly Hillbillies, she would have gotten it. I would have. That's, That's right. That's right. right. That's right. I can see that. Randy Griffith. Yeah. I'll tell you the story about a man named Gibbs. Yeah, Four Mountaineer, Beverly Kent's kind of pretty. And every one day he was shooting out some rule. No, there's a guy who came from the pool. Oh, that was. Oh, Texas tea. Okay, all right. That's not what we're talking about today. There we are. All right. So, um, here are some these are fertility. We've been doing some, some work on the outside of the building. Yes. Okay. David, who is a wonderful painter, has been working really hard. Really? And, and what has David been doing? He has been scraping paint. Off. He has been scraping like a banshee, right? Mm -hmm. And you, Mark, you can come here and actually look. Like, if you, you look here, what color is that? Uh, I'd say reddish That's orange. Red. That's okay, red. there we go. That is, I was going back to the original life that this building had. That is blockbuster red. Yeah, yeah, or, or, is, it, or is it Hollywood video red? Yeah, blockbuster was blue. Hollywood video Hollywood. red. Yeah. So David's having to scrape everything out. So there's a lot of scraping going on. Yeah. So sometimes... And then it came to a screeching halt. Because, because the red has been put on in a factory. Yeah. Like they've gone or something. Yeah, but he knows that. Okay. He knows that. He just he's gonna put primer on it. So oh, okay. Okay. So you know, you won't be red forever. We're not going for a new color scheme. No. I'm We're not trying to go. It's not going back to red. We're going back to red and through to white, I guess. So to kind of clear it up. Okay. The, the paint was just flaking off. Anyway, that's not what we're talking. About. I want to talk about the scraping. The scraping. Mm. Sometimes Ooh. we talk with patients about some scraping. Yes. So what do. is the scraping we talk with patients? The endometrial lining scraping. The endometrial lining scraping. That's called endometrial biopsy, right? Yes. And we don't use one of David's scrapers, do we? No. no we don't. <clears throat> what do we use? We use usually a pop out that is like this. Okay, so this tiny, unless you're the one that's, 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 that's coming towards that's, that's, <laughs> this, Yeah, but this, you know, when you think about it, patients are often very frightened by this, right? And honestly, yes. like, this is not, it's usually not that bad. That's correct. I think it's correct. Right, right. right. So this Most is people call right. So, so this is it's really so you look at that. That's really sort of much smaller diameter than a pencil, right? Oh yeah. And and basically now it's a little bit bigger than a transfer catheter. So you would feel that going through the cervix. Now, I like doing my endometrial scratching, my endometrial biopsies with a patient with a full bladder and then under ultrasound. Yes, you because do. Because then you've got sort of the angle in your favor. In terms of, and you see it go, and honestly, mm -hmm. I think when patients are watching, they're like, oh, look, they're kind of distracted, and they're thinking, am I going to pee on Dr. Gordon? <laughs> I'm just pushing real hard. And sometimes that will actually help in terms of, you know, right, yeah. When I started here at Southeastern, I wasn't, this, this one particular type of type biopsy, I was not as used to. So the very first patient I did, so when you put the thing in, you pull back on this to create a little vacuum, and then you can you can do the biopsy, and the tissue will, will go up in there, right? Mm -hmm. So I wasn't used to this particular brand, and so I did, and I did that. And that is not helpful because there's no suction, there's no suction anymore. So that I was like, I guess I'm going to have to put another one in there. So I, I, I didn't realize that, but now I do. So I know that you can't. You can't just pull it. You, you can't. Stops. You can't pull it. Doesn't stop. You can't pull it to stop. Right. So, so that's the endometrial biopsy. So what, what are we doing endometrial biopsies for? Why would you well, them? sometimes we do them to see if someone has a low-grade chronic endometritis infection. That's right. And there are some newer tests that are coming out that have just come out to look at that. Dr. Keenan has been really good about uh, dialogue with the company about that test. Yes. It's called the Ella test and then the Emma, the Emma and the Ella. I guess. Emma and Alice. Alice. Emma and Alice. Oh. That's right. I don't, Alice doesn't <laughs> live here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, so there's some specifics about that that we're investigating, and they are, you know, sort of a more high-tech version. So when we look for inflammation of the lining, 
you could do this newer test that we're trying to figure out exactly how to apply them. But in the past, we have done looking for the type of inflammatory cells that aren't supposed to be in the lining. Right. And so we asked for a special stain to be done by the pathologist to mm -hmm. look for those. Okay. So that's the first thing. It's chronic endometritis. Okay. So that would, this would be a test for that. Okay. What's the, then the second thing is that we do it for is we do it before an embryo transfer sometimes, before the cycle starts to sort of scrape the lining, scratch it up so it. Right, so the endometrial tickle it. Tickle Right, the endometrial <laughs> tickle is not so tickling, right, but that is in terms of endometrial scratch, and the theory being that it's kind of like pruning your rose bushes, you cut back those, those rose bushes and they come out in full bloom. Mm -hmm. So maybe something about the reparative process when you do the biopsy. Fresh new makes it energy. more conducive or something, right? Right. Hard to prove. Some randomized studies did not show a significant benefit. And yeah, you know, we, we've all had patients that got pregnant after the scratch or after the biopsy. Maybe it has nothing to do with that, but you know, certainly, it's whatever, yeah. hey, it worked, it worked. Okay. And then the third thing we're doing is for endometrial receptivity assay. Yeah. And this comes up with uh, sometimes for the NEDC patients where we haven't had success, we really thought we should have success in a frozen cycle. Mm -hmm. And why, where is that t why are we doing that test? We are doing that test to see if the endometrial lining is receptive to the embryo being able to implant on the day we're actually planning to do the transfer. That's right. All right. So it's a test developed by Carlos Simon. Carlos, brilliant guy. He was a fellow when I was a resident at Stanford. And he and his wife were lovely people. They were visiting from Valencia, Spain, and they worked on this, came up with this, um, did ultimately were able to create a commercial assay to look for markers as to which genes are turned on and which genes are turned off. And that allows you to say it's like the sweet spot. Now, I know when you're out there playing tennis, so I know you play tennis a lot at yeah. the country club. If the courts are open, you <laughs> ride your thoroughbred course over from the right. equestrian club, and now you're at the country club. And you didn't feel like golfing that day, so you thought you'd just play tennis instead. But you know, sometimes yeah. you're playing tennis, right? And you, you hit through. You know that feeling when you're hitting through on tennis, and it kind of goes flop. But the ball makes it over the net. But it didn't. It didn't make a very satisfying sound, right? And we, right. you would, wouldn't really hit in the sweet spot I'll on a tennis racket. Right Last time I hit the tennis ball, it went flop, over the whole thing. Right, flop, right, and so. Uh, <laughs> So we always get visitors around the crazy place. So, uh, we have the delivering some supplies. But, you know, but, uh, so, so the flop, the ball gets over, but it wasn't pretty, right? right? But if you hit it in the sweet spot, it's like flop, and it feels good, right? So I know you feel good. And when you're working those lessons with your tennis pro, he's like, when the good job. Good job. <laughs> so, so that's sort of the idea of the ERA, right? So you could get implantation you know, on that day, but maybe it wasn't really the perfect day. You know, maybe the perfect day was a day later or a day earlier of progesterone. So that's the idea between the ERA. It's not a thumbs up or thumbs down. It's just, hey, this day could work, but maybe it's more ideal to do the transfer on that day. Right. So that's the idea between the ERA. Yes. So, so our biopsies, we're looking for inflammation. We're looking for your, usually ERA, and we're looking for the benefit of the actual scratch, right? Yes. That's not to do a biopsy to roll out cancer in our patients who have really, really, really long and irregular cycles. That's different, right? That's sort of a health issue to that. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're doing our, our endometrial receptivity and uh, endometrial biopsies, right? So yes. just remind us not to pull back so far on that thing. So You've taken fencing lessons before, haven't you? I have not. <laughs> I have not. Only lightsaber lessons oh, okay. at, 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 okay. uh, at, at Star Wars Land. Okay. All right. Well, that's 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 what I got. It's a beautiful weekend because I'm on call. Right? Because, <laughs> of course. Know, it would be raining if I were off. Hey, and no, you're not. Oh yes. I, I, so obviously it's me that's determining the weather. Anyway, so uh, you know, thank you so much. Thank you. Bethany, Holly, and Trisha also say hi. Hey. They say looking great, y'all. Hey, that's good. That's good. I'm liking the y'all. Yeah, no. You all yeah. still sound much more natural yeah, to me, but whatever. But, uh, so <laughs> we wish you all the very best. We're, we're happy to be unmasked here for our uh, second yeah. Facebook Friday. Yeah. And, and uh, wish you all a happy, healthy, and safe weekend. And we'll see you. We are here. I am here next Friday. Okay. You ready, babe? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> not out of town. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be here me. next Friday. Don't leave me start. in charge. Of no Dr. McCollum will be running the clinic. <laughs> All right. All right. Mark, thank you so much.
Thanks, guys. Happy Friday.